Thanks, Karen, for the introduction. Hi. Uh, and we're fairly uh, short on time, so I'll try and get through this uh, fairly quickly. So uh, I was asked to talk on short-term operational planning of water grids, and this is work that was done by some of my colleagues. Uh, so PhD student uh, Stephanie Ashbolt, who started her PhD while she was at CSIRO and is now working at Melbourne Water. Sharoma Mahipala, who was also at uh, CSIRO, but now at, uh, at Dwelp in Victoria. And uh, Chris Pereira, who uh, is a professor at uh, Victoria University and has been working in uh, water supply planning for many years and uh, used to run the Realm uh, training course, which was the, the software used by many regional or many water authorities in Victoria for water planning. Uh, so talking about water grids, uh, so what are water grids? They're just basically water networks um, and uh, I suppose uh, where they differ from the traditional water network is they have some uh, more advanced water supply sources, so things like desalination and, and wastewater uh, recycling. So um, that gives them different characteristics to uh, perhaps a, the traditional water network uh, where we're working off surface waters or, or groundwaters. Um, they also have two-way uh, connections, so you have pipelines that can uh, pump either way, uh, and certainly multiple supply-demand pathways. Uh, and the thing that makes it a little bit different to your normal uh, network is that uh, desalination and wastewater recycling tend to be more expensive <coughs> forms of water, but more reliable forms of water. So when you come to optimise its operation, you, you're looking at minimising the cost, Min, uh, maximising water security and also maximising environmental outcomes which uh, can be environmental flows but it can also be flood protection. Uh, so how do you actually manage that so you get uh, deliver on those outcomes uh, and uh, trying to meet these multiple <coughs> objectives. Uh, so this is really just a diagram of uh, showing you some of, uh, of what the model would uh, look at. So as I said multiple sources of water multiple demands, etc. And I'll come back to that later so we can skip over that one. Uh, so uh, before they started, the team uh, went to some water grid operators and said, well, uh, what is it that you actually need in this area? And they said, well, we actually have lots of, oh, not lots, but we have tools for that help us with uh, long-term planning, so 50-year horizon, but we don't have much in the way of tools that help us operate these systems. So from six months to five years operation. Um, and so that's what they looked at. So they're really questions about uh, operating the, the grid rather than augmenting the grid. grid. And uh, so there's one, I suppose, the two uh, areas that have water grids, what would claim to be water grids, are South East Queensland and Victoria. And, uh, the South East Queensland people, when they operate their, uh, their water grid, every six months have to review their operating rules for the next 12 months, so they're continuously uh, revising and planning for the next 12 months. Uh, and so they uh, you know, said something that would help them uh, with that would be uh, quite good. Uh, so as I said, we have these complex supply-demand networks, uh, have sources with different characteristics, so... Uh, Lower, um, uh, lower reliability, uh, but oh, sorry, low high cost and, and low high reliability. You have uncertain demands uh, and uncertain climate. So your demands and, and climate are linked. So you might have a period of hot weather coming up, not much rain, or it might be quite <coughs> wet. So how are you going to manage all these things? Uh, and because the, the system's quite uh, complex, how do you know what the outcomes of your um, uh, operating rules will be. So it can be quite difficult to uh, determine. Uh, so the research was really about building a framework which would help them uh, make these decisions. Uh, and so the framework's just shown down there at the bottom. So you define your multi-objective uh, multi optimisation uh, parameters that you want. Uh, you have your operating rules, which are your decision variables, and you put them into some sort of uh, system simulation. And I won't talk about that, I don't really know much about that, but uh, that's quite a, a detailed simulation and they were running this through uh, the e-water source system uh, and then it would come back with these uh, objective functions, so you know the cost for the water over the next six months or 
uh, whatever it is you, you put in as your objectives. Uh, you then uh, do that for a range of uh, um, operating rules. So you have a, a large number of those that you could potentially use. Uh, you get out the optimised uh, results for each of those uh, op sets of operating rules uh, and then put it into some sort of analysis system and they chose to use some visual techniques to, to help with that. And I'll uh, show you some examples of that. And uh, then uh, from there, you can select a smaller number of uh, potential uh, sets of operating rules and do some multi-criteria analysis around that before ending up with your, your uh, selected operating rules for the next six months or five years or however long. Uh, just put this one up briefly, that's the more detailed uh, look at the framework and it's really just to show that it does take into some of, uh, some of the complexity of the system, so uh, forecast demands, forecast inflows, etc. Uh, were taken into account when uh, doing the optimisation. Uh, they chose to use South East Queensland as a case study site, so it's got, as I said, lots of demands and and, uh, and source, uh, sources of water. Uh, and so some of the operating rules that they'd be looking at, are, you know, <coughs> when do they switch the two-way pipeline in terms of direction, in, in pumping direction? When do they operate the desalination plant and at what rate? Uh, and if they're operating the potable water recycling system, then, you know, when do they turn that on? Uh, and they have need to take into account, you know, the current local regional system-wide storage volume plus the forecast for the uh, future climatic conditions. And looking to minimise operational cost, minimise spills from reservoirs uh, and maximise water security. And uh, the way this is shown in the next slides is really looking at the minimum storage experienced over the planning period. So you actually want a high value of the minimum storage, which uh, can be a little bit confusing when you first look at it. Uh, so you put in uh, your operating rules and you get out set a set of data like this, uh, and that's how it's shown. So here you have the total spill, uh, total cost here, and minimum storage volume. Uh, and you can see you get a range of, uh, each of those points is an optimised condition optimise uh, condition for a particular set of operating rules. And you can see that depending on the operating rule, rules you select, you get uh, quite different outcomes. Uh, and so you might be interested in uh, minimising the total cost, minimising the spill, and so you might operate down here, but you, you have to trade off um, your water security because you have a lower minimum storage uh, volume during that period. You might not like that, so you might have to move to a higher cost scenario uh, um, where you've got a bit more spill, but you have a bit more uh, reliability in terms of your minimum storage volume. So it's still quite complex, and how do you pick a single option? Uh, so what they were suggesting was you pick uh, a few of these that you're quite interested in, in terms of the trade-off, and you can do a bit more detailed analysis around that. Uh, and they came up with this visualisation technique whereas if you got one that was the ab absolute optimum it would be just a dot in the middle but you never get that so you're looking at how each of these points vary in terms of the minimum storage away from uh, the best operating, uh, the best condition for the minimum storage and the total cost, and total spill etc. So here you have a low spill scenario, here you have a low cost scenario uh, and you can uh, take those and uh, do some ranking on those if you if you like to use that sort of an approach. Uh, so some multi-criteria analysis, uh, analysis and then select um, your best operating conditions. Uh, this is operating rules, sorry. Um, this is just uh, uh, some information about how they would go about putting in some of the uncertainty around uh, stream flows. Uh, and some of the other uh, parameters they might put in, but this is just uh, showing it for stream flows. So here you have the uh, historical data, so averaged out, uh, but the orange line is what you have for forecast for the next uh, six months or 12 months, so quite different to uh, historical reference. Um, 
what Stephanie was suggesting was that you can take a few of these points, so take the 10% value, 25%, 50%, 75%, 90%, uh, run them each time you run those set of operating rules and get an average value out. Uh, if you do that, then you do get a, a better uh, prediction of what's likely to occur. Uh, so that's a fairly quick overview of uh, what they were doing, and if you want some more information, then you can uh, look at some of the um, publications that have come out from that, uh, her work. Um, we've got their contact details there, uh, and a thesis, if you're really interested, is available online up there. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. We've probably got time for a quick question whilst right. the panel are sort of making their way to their chairs. Just a quick one. Uh, that is for a, a drinking water network. So it's uh, for water grid for water supply. So I didn't actually say that. And, and, and how about the um, water quality model? And I'm talking more specifically about aesthetic parameters. How does that feature? In, you know? uh, I didn't mention it, but I know it's, uh, it's something they did look at because they do have different water qualities. Uh, I wasn't involved in the project, so I, wasn't, uh, I can't give you that detail, I'm sorry, but uh, I think it was covered in, in the approach that they looked at. Okay. Thank you, Stephen. If we could just thank all three presenters for the speech.